to a special Light Reading Innovator video with Juniper Networks. I'm Phil Harvey. I'm an editor at Light Reading. And joining me today is Andrew Vaz from Juniper. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hey, good, Phil. Thanks a ton. Thanks for uh, doing this. So I have uh, plenty of questions about uh, uh, edge computing and the edge in general. Um, Juniper is, is uh, heavily invested in the edge. And I guess a great place for us to start is what is the state uh, the state of the union, if you like, on uh, the multi-service edge business for Juniper? Yeah, um, thanks, Phil, for, for the question. And it, it's actually fascinating right now. And, and I'll take a step back and actually talk through um, what we're seeing in the market, uh, first of all. Uh, when I talk to various service providers, uh, really globally, as well as uh, certain enterprises, um, what we see is a doubling down uh, candidly on what I would call critical network infrastructure. Um, and the multi-service edge is absolutely a piece of that critical infrastructure. Um, when we look at it, you can see where we are in these times uh, of the pandemic. Uh, functionally, you've seen network paradigms change in terms of how people use the network, um, what kind of applications they're using on it, uh, we've seen amazing statistics uh, from various providers, cloud providers, et cetera. I think Microsoft was, was quoting almost an 800% increase in cloud usage. Um, AT&T was talking about 700% uh, increase in SD-WAN connections um, across the board. Uh, and you see it in your own home uh, working habits. Now, as the kids go back to school, et cetera, we're seeing just increased online learning, collaboration tools, uh, et cetera, and it, and it keeps ramping. Um, one of the critical things we're seeing is people don't know if we'll ever go back to how it was. So you functionally see a difference in how the network's being used, um, the criticality of the network and the functions in the network that are required. Uh, as things are changing, um, people are being required to be more flexible and versatile in, in frankly, how their network works. Uh, overall. And that's where multi-service edge really comes into play. Um, it's a catch-all term in some sense because it's providing so many different services. It could be business services. It could be residential services, which is obviously very important right now. It could be cloud edge services as well. So across the, the board, uh, you're really seeing a doubling down uh, in terms of um, how people invest in these multi-service edge networks. You're also seeing an increase in the number of um, what I'd call vectors of what they're taking into account as they invest in it. Um, and what I, what I mean by that is it's not just about bandwidth or power per gig anymore because the traffic patterns are changing, the applications being used are changing, how they're being used are changing. People are looking at flexibility, versatility, security, uh, resiliency across the board. So. I would, if I said, what's the state of the multi-service edge business? Um, again, people are doubling down on it, but they're also looking at it much more broadly uh, in, in terms of how they evaluate uh, their vendors. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, one of the Juniper's, uh, I guess, competitive advantages in the past had been um, investing in silicon for the edge. Is it still is it still uh, doing that? Oh. Uh, Absolutely. And uh, I would say we're extremely proud of our uh, custom silicon uh, edge investments, uh, especially. Uh, if I take a look at uh, the Trio chips, which really power our um, MX uh, universal router portfolio, uh, which is really where, where we go after the uh, multi-service edge with, uh, that's 15 years of investment. Uh, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, as I said, the number of vectors of evaluation have, have broadened. And uh, right. the capabilities, having such flexible uh, per, uh, built silicon is really critical for us uh, at this stage. And uh, let, let me give you some examples of, of what I mean by that. When, when Juniper architected this Trio silicon for its MX routers, um, it, it's actually fascinating. We're bringing features out today on really some of our first generation of chips. That's how flexible they were architected and they were built. It was built with a philosophy of any type of feature, any type of new application should be able to be coded uh, onto these chips. And that's just not um, something that's um, looked at today. Uh, chips tend to be a little bit more specialized in terms of their purpose and form, fit, and function. 
So uh, one person told me it was an interesting one. They so they consider this Trio chip as the Intel processor of the networking uh, chipset, and uh, we're finding that true. So with a heavy investment, um, you know, 15 years of investment, we're, we're actually on our fifth generation of chip. Uh, we're working on our sixth and planning our seventh. So we have a continued investment here. Yeah, it's a constant cycle. Um, so earlier you said the the, the multi-service edge um, needs flexibility and it needs you know features that scale to meet the growing number of applications. Um, in, in at Light Reading, we've covered a bunch of new competitors that have shown up and new entrants in this uh, in the in the edge computing space, but also the edge networking space more specifically. Um, right. How do these newer endeavors compare to uh, to Juniper's MX? Mm-hmm. You know, um, Phil, I would say this. I'm a big believer in the right tool for the job, right? And um, in some parts of your network, you're going to be focused on pure cost per bit, pure power per bit from CapEx, OpEx perspective and how much data you can move. Uh, In some cases, you're going to be focused on how you also process those bits. What kind of functions can you actually perform on those packets, the networking protocols, and again, do you have that versatility and flexibility to handle new use cases? Um, so again, this is where I would say, if I uh, stacked up the multiple vectors where Juniper performs very well, we have some of the highest logical scale capabilities due to our software and our chips. So for example, uh, we have 10, mil- 10 million um, fib route capability. Uh, we have amazing fast filter capabilities that we've built into our chips. Uh, that allows us to perform like 1 billion um, um, uh, filter operations on our systems. And, and why is this important? Because as you start looking at new applications like security and you have to program your router to work in real time without a performance hit, yet perhaps filter an increasing number of attack vectors, of uh, malicious performers, et cetera, uh, it becomes critical for us to be able to handle those new types of applications uh, as we go forward. So um, I would say this, right tool for the job. Um, mm-hmm. If the focus, and what's, which is what we're seeing from multi-service edge is on breadth of functionality, feature flexibility, able to be handling this new set of applications and use cases that um, you know, things like you can't predict like the pandemic are forcing in on us. Right. It becomes really critical. Um, a, a great example of this is if you look at the enterprise workspace now. All of us are working from home for the most part uh, in, in, in the high tech industry and, and beyond. Most of our children are going back to school and online learning. Um, yeah. The actual paradigm of security has changed. It's no longer a central security. And when we talk about things like SASE, for example, we say the enterprise network is inverted, right? So now people are accessing enterprise assets from outside the network. Now the number of endpoints has dramatically increased, right? The number of threat surfaces has also increased on par with that. So people are rethinking how the heck do I manage this and enable this as I go forward? Yeah, it's interesting. It has it has really changed the shape, I guess, of of the uh, if you look at all the people connected, the shape of of the the network diagram suddenly looks a lot different um, with with people working more from remote uh, areas. Um, part of the multi-service edge story has to be software, obviously. Um, so Juniper's flagship software is Junos. How is that addressing the needs of both the multi-service edge and, uh, and cloud computing, uh, you know, a, a, as part of this story? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. And you're right. The, the investment is obviously not just the hardware and the chips. It's actually the software and, and what it does. Um, I would say we've invested in three vectors uh, overall, three main vectors overall. I'll give you, give you some examples here. One is in the Junos architecture. Um, we've spent a considerable amount of time rewriting some of the guts of Junos. So it's much more scalable, programmable, uh, more easily be, uh, able to allow us to code and improve our feature velocity. So the guts of Junos itself has been dramatically um, upgraded, uh, if you will. Uh, the second and third pieces really have to do with specific use cases. And uh, let me take uh, residential services as one of those use cases. Uh, I feel we have one of the best uh, residential subscriber or B&G um, uh, systems, frankly, on the market. And we're actually improving that. The next set of innovations include uh, CUPS, which is basically control plane and user plane separation. 
uh, for the VNG uh, market, uh, where we we're, we're have that um, coming out. And it's also uh, allows us to go and scale a control plane in a cloud scale manner on demand while leveraging all of these fast filters, massive bandwidth capabilities on the actual router itself. So we split the control and data plane and are enabling us to take the best of both worlds, if you will. The second thing we've done with that is we've actually looked at um, wired wire, um, wireless convergence and fixed wireless access and how we kind of merge these pieces together. Uh, we're working with uh, several customers, one in APAC, where they're actually using the MX as this BNG. And the next step is actually in integrating this um, fixed wireless access, this, this um, combination of mobile subscribers and uh, wireline subscribers in the same box. So you can see the software is just expanding dramatically uh, in terms of its capabilities and feature set. And it's really allowing uh, our customers now to leverage the best of all worlds uh, with this. Um, the final example I'll give you is with security. And, and I think this is a super important one given where we're at. Um, we already saw this with like 5G applications, right? With the number of endpoints exploding from IoT and MTC and different applications. Now we're, we're throwing a pandemic on top of it with everybody working from home. Your threat service is increasing dramatically. We actually have an incredible amount of integrated security in the MX router, um, both from a hardware and software perspective. We actually have some, uh, what we believe in is a connected security. Basically your security has to connect into the network uh, holistically, not just as a point uh, piece. So if you look at what the MX can do is we have an example of this is our partnership with Carrero, where we work with Carrero's um, uh, threat defense director. We're able to actually implement massive scale DDoS uh, protection type capabilities in the sub 15 seconds, where the threat defense can actually take um, and analyze mirrored packets and actually go program the MX routers with our fast filter capabilities to go and scrub uh, and protect your edge for massive DDoS attacks. We have another feature called uh, Sky ATP, where uh, for so we call it Sec Intel, where basically the security Intel capabilities are we connect to Juniper's cloud ATP system, where we constantly monitor and look at you know malicious performers, malicious IP address, hosts, et cetera. And again, we can keep a whitelist, blacklist, et cetera, and program the actual routers, um, you know, these custom ASICs that we have to basically filter out uh, any of these uh, bad performers on the network or malicious uh, uh, actors on the network uh, as well. So you can see our software is not just on box, we're also scaling it off box into to integrate properly with various cloud systems. Excellent. Yeah, thanks for that uh, explanation because that kind of walked me through the whole uh, the whole range of activities that are going on around that. Um, let's talk a little bit about and and kind of summarize because you brought it up a, a couple of different times. Uh, you know, necessarily. Um, uh, let's sort of summarize what how Juniper's MX is addressing the challenges that have been brought on by the pandemic. Because as as you mentioned and as we you know observe day to day. It's, it's obviously changed the way we work. It's changed the way that, 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 net, that people are using networks. Um, how, how is the MX um, sort of holding up and addressing those, those changes? Right. And, you know, that's, that's a really good question. If I could summarize it in a way is with things like the pandemic, where there's so many states of unknown, uh, more so than our traditional life uh, pre-pandemic, um, we're seeing operators have to respond in different ways for their network. And they're looking for something they can trust, uh, number one, and something that's flexible. Uh, one comment from a customer was, it just works. No matter what um, angle or curveball I've been thrown, the system's flexible enough that you're able to handle it. Um, so when I say think of multi-service edge, and it's probably the most demanding set of use cases in terms of, of uh, a network. Um, a network device that, uh, that would have to handle. You have to look at it across the board. Um, and when you measure it across all these different vectors, you know, performance, logical scale, uh, security, resiliency, uh, software capabilities and breadth, uh, the MX is the gold standard, uh, candidly. It, it's The hardware was designed this way. Uh, the, the ASICs were designed from the ground up uh, from day one to handle this. And our software uh, also handles this. And you can, like we talked about these various use cases, 
you can see we're integrating many different ancillary areas to make a, a network operator's life easier. We've anticipated the security threat impact. It's frankly just been accelerated. Uh, that's one thing I would say with, with the pandemic is really some of the trends we are seeing, it's actually just accelerating overall. So it's becoming very relevant for various vendors today. Okay. Um, last question. Um, how has this, how has the pandemic changed the technology consumption model for, uh, for your, uh, customers, the service providers? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a really interesting question because, uh, that has functionally changed overall. Um, and, and again, I will say there's an acceleration that has taken place here. We were already seeing a propensity for service providers wanting to consume um, what I would consider as on demand. So as they had a take rate on a service, they'd want to pay for it, like pay for a port or pay for a use case, et cetera. Um, this is something we've actually focused in a lot on. Uh, I always tell my team, you know, you can innovate on, on the hardware, you can innovate on the software. Actually, the consumption models are equally as important to innovate on, easier for customers to uh, actually absorb and, and, and consume the product. So we're seeing this now. Um, basically, as um, there's hotspots, as there's COVID hotspots, uh, for example, or as even people are looking at specific use cases, uh, we've actually changed our consumption models to be to look at it from an application basis. For example, if somebody's just using it for basic transport, cost reports probably less than if somebody's using it for a high-end service like a BNG or a fixed wireless access service. It's doing less work. It's not a revenue, revenue generating type of port. Um, people can buy it differently. People are also looking at buying in chunks. So maybe they want to buy a 24 port 100 gig line card, but they only need 12 ports. Um, the ability to offer them a pay as you grow type capability um, on offer it on demand, if you will, to turn on ports as needed has become critical. So we're absolutely seeing uh, innovation around consumption models as much as we are on the basic technology pieces. All right. Um, I think it's a great place to leave it for now. It sounds like uh, things are as busy as ever at Juniper and, uh, and active as ever in the multi-service edge. Uh, Andrew Vaz, thanks so much for, uh, for joining me today. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks a lot, Phil. I really appreciate your time. Take care.